his phone also p- pasted and sent a message that said, call me at 956, whatever, whatever. And I was like, huh, that's weird. And he goes, ignore that. My phone just like pasted something from earlier. And I was like, okay. It's a sex lines. In my why, crazy- why is that their go-to? To be like, I have no idea. <laughs> right. We're just like, exactly. oh, no. It's like, no do you really know that dog? Right? Obviously you fucking know. Now I'm pissed because now I feel like it. you're lying about yeah. it. So, exactly. So I fucking went to peoplefinder.com. <laughs> I so entered proud. in. I so entered proud. in my my fucking dollar ninety nine, <laughs> and I fucking ran the number. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Big Mood. We Big are mood. digital today because um, we're far as hell from each other. I know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we're so in three different states. Way. Yeah, four. Three. What oh, did yeah. I say? State of depression. For there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um. This is going to be a catch up episode. You know, we haven't seen each other in about what at this point, maybe nearly two months now. A month, mm-hmm. a, a month. month or so. Yeah, it's going to be a catch up episode. Lots of things time. are changing. Uh, lots of things are happening in our lives, and we want to tell you guys about it because we don't got no one else to talk to. Yeah, you. Yeah, were, we need I don't validation. Think you were blonde last time. Were you blonde last time? Mm-hmm. I was blonde last time, and I went like a milky brown. Now I want oh, to go darker. I like Looks that color. I don't Thank know you. why you look blonder now though. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It feels, yeah. Maybe because it got touched up, so your roots like, got touched up, so it looks, looks possibly lighter. Now. I think that color looks good on I, you. I like that color. I like it. I don't you. like the really bright blonde on you. Yeah. I think I'm gonna stick with this or go a little bit darker. I think I found my color. Yeah. Um, let's start off. Let's. You know what? Let's start off with Jess. We never start off with Jess when it comes to catching up on things. What's up, girl? Yeah, How you doing, girl? We um, miss so you. <laughs> I started online dating again. Ooh. Um, it's not been going well. <laughs> oh, oh God. Oh no. <laughs> As you probably expected. She texted our group chat. She was like, y'all, tell, l- remind me to tell you guys about this online dating snafu yeah. when we record. So we haven't even heard this yet. I know. No. I'm so eager to hear this. Mm-hmm. So um, there was two kind of uh, back-to-back like bad ones, but I don't really want to get into the second one. But I will tell you guys about the first one because I think it's pretty funny. Um, and you might think I'm crazy, but let me explain the whole thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, happened boy. was. Oh, what boy. happened was. Uh, no. So, okay. So I met, I matched with this guy on Bumble. And then we were talking and um, it was going pretty well. I was actually really excited to talk to him. He was like, hey, do you want to talk on the phone? So we did a phone call and I was like, OK, I can talk to him on the phone. I really like him on the phone, too. Nikki's just like, I don't know out. what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I need some of I'm your light in my yeah. frame. Like, I'm so dark. It was fine until I took my sunglasses <laughs> off and then like, it's like, you saw my socks. <laughs> <laughs> they're back to normal now how funny that's so is funny it? no it's still oh, pretty no, it's bright still yeah bro- no yeah. it's pretty bright it's still blown oh, out. No. i just light up the room okay i'm sorry <laughs> go ahead <laughs> so um i'm trying to remember okay so we, everything was going super well we were supposed to meet on like a wednesday i'm actually i've been off this whole week by the way because i'm in between jobs i got a new job i'm not gonna talk about it but I got a new mm-hmm. job. Um, Yay, congrats. So, <laughs> thanks. Um, so I was in between jobs. So I was like, yeah, I can meet you on like a Wednesday or whatever. Like, I don't I don't have anything else going on. Um, and then on a Monday, he was like, do you want to meet on Tuesday? And I was like, sure. Because it felt kind of like there was a lot of momentum where he was like, you know, we were getting along really well. So I was like, this is going to be good. Like, I can already tell this is going to be good. And then, so Monday night we're texting and I was like, oh, hey, do you have any um, Spotify, uh, like give me a Spotify playlist of like EDM or something. Like I wanna see what your taste is. And so he sent me, he like copy and pasted a Spotify playlist into my text messages. Well, somehow at the same time he copied and pasted the Spotify um, playlist, his phone also pasted and sent a message that said, call me at 956 whatever whatever and i was like huh that's weird and he goes ignore that my phone just like pasted something from earlier and i was like okay it's a sex line no <laughs> no <laughs> what was that uh, <laughs> gina what are you doing <laughs> i'm curious i'm I, uh, okay. my attention is yeah. so <laughs> She's so, <laughs> just a squint to focus on i it. was yeah. i was gonna ignore this right and just you go just to had bed to call I was gonna ignore and go to bed, <laughs> but I love that you. <laughs> I love this. I didn't call it. I didn't call oh, it. Okay. What I did do. Can we call let me it tell right you, now? Let I me know, tell you what I did do. No, 
We don't need to call it because I know whose number it is. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> so I was like, hmm, should I go to bed or should I investigate my spidey sense? Because it's kind of weird that it would just say, call me at whatever, like that you would have copied and pasted that. In my head, I'm like, you copied and pasted that from Bumble, right? Like it's another, it's just another girl's number. Not a big deal. Cause honestly, we're all dating. Who's that? We're Steve? all dating. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know who's in the yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I mean, we're all like still like, I know that I just met you off the app. We haven't even met in person. So I'm like, I get that you're probably still talking to other people and like getting numbers and like setting up dates or whatever. That's fine. But so I texted him back and I was like, so what was that number that you accidentally pasted? And he goes, I have no idea. Okay. And I was like, OK, um, well, you sure you don't know what it is? Cause like, it seems like maybe it's a copy and, pa copy and paste from Bumble, just wondering. And he was like, no, I have no idea where that number came from. It like fell Guys out of the so sky. Guys are so bad at light. Like, it fell out of the sky, so right? I, I so know. what I did was in my why, crazy- Why is that their go-to? To be like, I have no idea. <laughs> right? Like, like, exactly. Oh no, it's like, like no do you really know that dog? Right? right? Obviously you fucking know, it was on your fucking like- Exactly. I'm like, you know, you fucking press copy earlier like the clipboard on your phone whatever doesn't yeah. last that fucking long like yeah. that was from today so anyways i was just like in my head i was like okay it's obviously another girl's number i don't care but like now i'm pissed because now i feel like you're it. lying about yeah, it so, exactly so i fucking went to peoplefinder.com <laughs> i so entered proud. in i so entered proud. in my my fucking dollar 99 <laughs> and i fucking ran the number and it That's was a pretty girl it was a pretty girl named Pamela and she lives in Austin, Texas. And I was like, and then, so I was like, ah, bro, you know what, guess what? You just seem a little bit busy. I don't know, like maybe we should just call off the date. I just feel a little bit defensive already. So he calls me oh. immediately, oh. he's calling me. And I was like, answer? I was like, we don't need to be fighting about this. Like we're not together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And he was just like, I, I swear, I don't know what that number's from. I have no idea where that came from. Why don't you call it? You can call it right now. I don't even know who that is. And I was just like, well, it's kind of weird because um, it just seems like it would be a girl's number from Bumble and it's like not a big deal or whatever. But he was just like, no, I have no idea. And so I was just like, well, I ran it through, a, I, I, Googled, I Googled <laughs> it so and it's, funny. A, it's a pretty girl named Pamela who lives in Austin. So you probably remember, right? And he's like, no, I have no idea. Oh my God, then, he's sticking to it. That's yeah, he was just like, he was like, can we still meet up? Can we still meet up? And I was just like, I don't think so. I'll think about it. And so I hung up and then like 10 minutes go by and I was like, I can't, this is like, major fucking like red mm -hmm. flags not because he's obviously dating at the same like i get right. it everybody he's yeah, lying about it's it it's the lying like, part yeah, I'm like, can't it, fix that shit. it showed me so much about who he was like he couldn't just be like this is what i would have loved okay guys out there yeah this is what i would have loved to hear i'm so sorry that i copy and pasted another girl's number and you had to see that it kind of broke the magic yes but I would still love to meet you. I think like we could have a great connection. Like, will you still meet with me? I'm sorry that that happened. Like, exactly. yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Just some How hard is that? communication right? started off on the so right track. I was just <sighs> like, I went from being really Honesty. excited about this one. That's finally, it. I was finally excited about a guy that I met online oh. and I didn't even get to meet him because he was a fucking liar. Was the Spotify well, playlist good? <laughs> I didn't even get to open it because I got so fucking <laughs> preoccupied. And well, then I just I mean, deleted. I just deleted the whole fucking thing. Damn. It, that means uh, you didn't waste time, so that's good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's rough out here in these streets. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. What yeah. a disappointment. It he really doubles was. down that hard. Triple, yeah. quadruple downs that hard on like something minor yeah. than uh -uh. it's yeah, so minor too because it would have just been like yeah it would have just been like yeah I get it like I'm still on the app like we haven't even met yet we're not dating yet it's fine but like yeah. why are why are you being so oh I got caught but I'm gonna lie about it no yeah no oh, imagine all the oh man yeah. oh. <laughs> it would have been so much more respectful or respectable mm -hmm. if he did just. To not like, like we're all adults and we know yeah. that people are dating. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like he thinks I'm stupid. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just like, oh, you don't know who I am She'll at all. She'll never know. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm so proud, Jess. Yeah. yeah. I was proud. like, I was like, what would Gina do? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> Gina would have paid that one ninety nine. Yeah, that's you what know, she would have done. 
This is a type of behavior that a guy ends up calling like all his exes or all the, the pe- girls that he's messed with in We're the past. Crazy. Like they're all crazy. Like yeah. I don't know why. Like I just have some crazy girls. Like I don't know. It's just like it's because you're a look fucking at your, liar. Exactly. Look at your freaking uh, actions. Look at your actions that make women go crazy. And it's like we we all have the rationalists that we're like, I don't need to look this up. Ah, but fuck it. What I would just want to know. And like, it's yeah. Not, like, it's not like, you feel God, it. I'm obsessed. I'm so it's crazy. Like that, I want to know. That women know. intuition tingle yep. that goes off that we're just like, we can't ignore it. We, we like, just have to see. We have to know. Was she crazy or was she right and she called you out on your shit? You know what I mean? Or maybe it seems crazy to you because people are establishing their boundaries and you can't stand that. Exactly. You know? Or like all those times that I found out, you know, that or the last time when I found out that he cheated, was I crazy and insecure and paranoid or was I right? I was right. You were mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Every I time mean, I have that tingle too, it's always been right. Yes. Exactly. One hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. That's why I talk about like my ex and how I went through his phone and I'm like, I never go through I never have the urge to go through anyone's phone. But for him, like I just felt it and then it was right. Like there yep. were so many women. Uh, yep. Don't ever uh, let me be confused. If I have to suspend oh, reality, yeah. <laughs> not even with guys with Jess. If, I, if with I have everyone. to fucking yeah, don't let me be confused. If you're asking me to fucking believe that your phone just copied and pasted a number from like a month ago, you have no idea who that is. Mm-hmm. That your clipboard lasts that long. I have to suspend all of my reality that you just this you have no clue <laughs> where could that have come from? Right. <laughs> but also like, at the I'm same not, time, he could have been he like even if he didn't want to tell you it was another girl, he sucks at lying. He could have been like, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's this new client that I'm meeting, we're meeting up for blah blah blah. I'm trying right. to talk to him, negotiate. But I'm glad that he sucks at lying though, because then <clears> I right? got to find out. Or he's exactly. just like, Oh, I'm trying to figure it out too, because that's hella weird. Like, yeah. wouldn't you be like, if that really did happen, wouldn't right. you be like, I really, I'm going to try to figure this out because like, this is fucking weird and I'm tripping. Like, yeah. well, so obviously, like when you're on Bumble, when you're on the dating apps, like people will be messaging and they're like, can I call you? And then someone will write, okay, go ahead and call me at this number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki. Nikki. <laughs> it's bothering me. I know, it's so bright. <laughs> okay, since Nikki's causing so much trouble over there, let's talk about Nikki. Nikki. <laughs> Sorry, I just need all the attention. Yeah, I know. You were on the news so because you did something really cool oh, like that <laughs> <laughs> you did something really cool what was it oh you yeah the news well it was poker news yeah cool they, it was, it's like it's like the coverage of all the like poker world and they that's so cool you know they do the play-by-plays of everybody and and ev- in the big tournaments and stuff but yeah i'm a professional poker player now so like that's why i'm like i got like, a hat and sunglasses and my wsop and <laughs> i'm so just cool. like do you have merch like, too <laughs> You're wearing all of your merch <laughs> on at the same time. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, you know, I've been talking about playing poker a lot on um, our podcast, and it started out as like something that I was using as an escape, and like got really in, like just obsessively into studying it, and like studying different range charts and just game theory and how like how professionals like statistically are profitable in the long run. And if you stick to a certain you know system and stuff, and then there's cash games and tournaments. And I was playing cash games only for a long time. And I thought tournaments were going to be too hard because it's a lot of variance. Like tournaments, you're probably only making money 20, 20% of the time is like a good percentage to big money. But when you're making money, you're making a lot of money if you're playing it right. Um, whereas cash games, you're winning like 60% of the time. So it's like, you're willing, winning smaller amounts, but it's over like a long period of time. And so I felt more comfortable with cash games, but because the WSOP is in Vegas and this is like my first time in Vegas during the WSOP, I was like really excited. It's all anyone's talking about, especially at the cash games tables. They're just like, are you playing? Do you know anyone playing? Like everyone talks about it and it's just a, a buzz. So I was like, you know, I really want to learn every aspect of this game because I just love it so much. And so at the beginning of this year, I started studying tournament strategy and uh, it was really hard to get used to because it's completely different than cash games. Like just, it's almost like a different game. Um, and then I, I grinded online for a while. I was trying to get the hang of it. And then finally won my first one online for $2,000. It was a $30, $30 buy-in. And then I won $2,000 in mm-hmm. January. And then I used that to hire a coach because I was like... Oh, I didn't the- know you got a coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like all the best players that I know 
even the, like especially the pro- professional players, they all have a coach. And so I wanted a really good coach that specialized in tournament strategy, but it was really hard to find. Like I couldn't get like a good referral. Um, everyone just told me to buy programs. I had already bought programs, like gone through training programs and stuff and learned strategy that way. But I wanted like spe- a specific a coach to help me work on my specific leaks, like things that I am personally doing wrong in the game that could be fixed. And so um, I really wanted a personal coach. And uh, finally, I I asked one of my professional poker player friends, Andrew Nimi, shout out. He's also a YouTuber vlogger. He's a, he vlogs poker. He does poker vlogs. There's like a poker vlogging community too. So it's like mm. a community within a community. And I kind of like joined up with all of them. And it's, it's really cool. It reminds me of YouTube way in the beginning. Um, everyone's like wanting to help each other and stuff. So he referred me to my coach, Jesse Sylvia, and we started working together and After the first week of working together, I won my first live tournament. I'd only played one before, busted. And the second one, which was right after our first coaching session, I got first place. That was a hundred dollar buy-in, and I won twenty five hundred dollars. And and it was with a a field of like one hundred eighty five people. So I was like, wow, that's really cool. But like, I know variance is really crazy, so I'm just going to be using these like low buy-ins as practices. Um, so that I can feel comfortable playing like a side event at the WSOP. So the next week I was just doing it weekly and I would grind online ones in between. But uh, the next week I did that same tournament, the hundred dollar buy-in and I got fifth place, which is still final table, which is where all the money is. So basically in tournaments, all the money is at the top, like the top nine places get the majority of the money. And then like up to 20 places get like the minimum cash. Um, at a tournament like that of that size, bigger if how, the tournament. How much did big. you get for fifth place? For fifth place on that one, there was about two hundred people, and I got about eight hundred dollars. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not not a crazy amount of money because no, it's not yeah. a big field, mm-hmm. not a big buy-in. Um, but these were all like you know practices because I would practice online and then I would try to you know play live as a practice because live is. There's just a lot more going on. There's a lot more visual simulation going on. You have to like manually calculate how many chips you have versus like what the starting, it's like, it's a lot of math going on. Um, and then like there's live reads, like you're able to like read people's energies, which I like the best. See, that's the, best. the reason why I can never play poker because there's math. It's just basic <laughs> math though, Gina. <laughs> no, see when I play D and D and I roll my dice, I still count with my fingers. Oh my God. <laughs> and my like, friends what? that I play with, yeah, they're like, oh, it's so cute that you're in character because your character is like this kid. I'm like, it's not, it's not a character. Just own that, <laughs> Dina. Don't me. tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> Adulting is hard. Whether you're studying your butt off in college, starting a new job, or just getting parts of your life in order, life can often feel like a never ending chore. Favor makes taking care of your reproductive health easy and painless. The Pill Club is now Favor. Favor offers professionally prescribed birth control subscriptions and sexual wellness products delivered straight to your door for free. Favor carries over 120 FDA approved brands and ships to all 50 states. Most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $7 per month without insurance. Favor delivers birth control to your door for free in discreet packaging along with fun self-care gifts and goodies. What's more, their licensed medical team is just a text away to provide you the care that you deserve. Sign up for birth control in just five minutes. Skip the office visit and waiting in line at the pharmacy and get treated right. Right now, when you go to heyfavor.com slash bigmood, Favor is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every Big Mood listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's heyfavor.com slash bigmood to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control remember that's heyfavor.com slash big mood you must use the link to make a donation yeah so then i was doing that um my, that was my first tournament was the last week of march and then the first one i won um live was the first week of april so i've only been doing them since then like a uh, one to two times eventually i went up to two times a week and uh training with my coach and like going over hand histories and stuff and all I wanted to do it was play some side events at the WSOP. So I did one two-day tournament at MGM Grand right before because I'd never played a two-day before. And um, it was a hundred dollar buy-in and I ended up winning twelve grand in second wow. place. That's the one I remember you talking about. Yeah. yeah, that was right before you guys came over. Yeah. And then um, I was like, sweet. So I'll use that as bankroll for the buy-ins at WSOP because I'm only doing these like five hundred dollar buy-ins, which was still the most I had ever paid. 
um, for that's a, buy-in, a lot of money, right? Yeah. Like it feels yeah. like a lot because I was used to hundred dollar buy-ins being mm-hmm. like the top, and that's like the lowest buy-in live. Um, but I was like, yeah, so this will just be for fun. Um, there's going to be a lot of people playing. People come from all over the world to play during this series, and of course, they're doing the smallest buy-ins because like it's easier than than doing the the main, which is ten thousand dollars to buy in. Whoa. So yeah, what's so, the prize for that? Millions. Whoa. Yeah, it, like I think the top prize is like eight million dollars or something like that. Crazy. This was not the female event that you were joining, right? The no. one that you won. There's, or, were you still gonna do the female? Yeah, event? the female okay. one is happening on June 29th. That's the one that's right before uh, us going to Austin. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that one's a four day event, and if I happen to make it to the final, then I might miss my flight to Austin. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's. It's worth it. Um, yeah, I'm willing to take that, roll the dice yeah, there. If you're um, going to make that much money. Yeah. yeah. So then this one was kind of, I considered like almost like a practice WSOP event, like to get, just to experience like being there. And like, it's really exciting. Like there's just a bunch of people from everywhere there to play poker and like everyone, that's all everyone's talking about. And, um, you know, there's the poker news, there are people doing interviews, there's like all the top poker celebrities that are doing interviews and they're playing the tournaments and you could just like watch them playing in tournaments. And I don't know, it's just really exciting. It, like it's it's like if you were into any sport and you got to mm-hmm. see like your favorite athletes like playing and then you can play with them. Like that's crazy. That's cool. Well, um, so any rich single poker. <laughs> many. <laughs> many uh, oh, sorry, single. Sorry. There's a many handsome. Single. <laughs> handsome. Mm, <laughs> harder. That's harder. <laughs> oh, in that case, you're that pushing it, Gina. Do you you're like, pushing uh, it. You're asking you for pick, too much. You only pick two out of three. Yeah. Non shower. <laughs> <single handsome. laughs> it smells kind of like a gym locker room in there. Ew. Oh, so it's like Comic Con. Mm, yeah, exactly. It's just your type, Gina. Yeah. Gina. Used to it. <laughs> Gina, I feel like you and I are like the same, uh, two sides of the same coin. <laughs> Yeah, except like, yours yeah. makes way more money, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I think you're making pretty good money. <laughs> um, no, but, that's awesome. I saw, like when you sent us the article. I was so stoked. It yeah, looks, you so, look so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I know. When you I sent that, that was like a a blog post or something. I didn't know it was like poker news. Like, oh yeah, I didn't know it's that like was a thing. all the poker players like watch poker news and like find out like who was who ran deep and which tournament and and all that stuff. I didn't really know either like where people were getting all the news from until they started covering me and then i was like oh shit this is like a big deal but yeah to run deep in any tournament is like really exciting but this one especially because it's the wsop and because the field is so large there's just such a slim chance of you getting to the top because of a variance like you're only cashing 20 percent even in those smaller buy-ins so this this buy-in, there was 5,717 people that entered. And there were a lot of professionals, a lot of multiple bracelet winners, um, co- poker coaches, you know, people that have play- been playing the game a long time. And so to, for this to be like my first series ever, it was uh, just like really exciting to to do. And I'm really thankful for the the prep beforehand that I was prepared to go to final table. I knew what that felt like before because of the smaller tournaments that I played. And so it didn't feel like so overwhelming. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. It just felt like a dream come true. And I meant to be here at this point. I didn't expect to be here this fast. I thought maybe next year I'd be ready to like, make a deep run in the series. Mm-hmm. And this one was just going to be to get my feet wet. But you just like splash the whole fucking yeah. scene. Yeah. I bet all these like crypt, these, uh, no, sorry, not crypto. These poker fucking mob guys are fucking leaning back reading the news. Like who's this fucking green? I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> who's this limo green that came in and busted the whole table? And they, I want to see what the be, bracelet looks like. What bracelet? It's yeah, gold. It's really pretty. What? Do you want to see? Gina, do the thing where you pull up things on the computer because like, you know how to do oh, things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do the streamer um, thing where you show us stuff. WSOP bracelet? That, that's for World Series of Poker, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm not dumb. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, oh, okay. damn. I mean, the fact that you had to ask, ask. I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I, had, I just had to ask for those. The, for the viewers. Don't know. Yeah, no? yeah. You're asking for the audience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, here, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here it's, we go. it's like gold, it's got jewels on it. Is it so it's a literal bracelet. Okay. Um, it looks like a I would it looks wear it. like a <laughs> Do you did you get one? No. Uh, you, oh, you have, have to, to be first, first. first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's oh. that's a different year. So they do different ones every year. This one yeah. has... is hideous. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, that, I'm not gonna lie. That's, that's sick that's as fuck. That's the ugliest. That's no, the ugliest that's, pawn that's shop shit I ever seen. Oh, Gina, that's look very up interesting. I just saw the diamonds and I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, wait, yeah. 2022 has very nice. Let's see 2022. Hold on. Uh, they look really heavy. Like is... thick. That one's better. 2018. 2018. Just, okay, I'll just see so 2022. Ugly. It looks like a, a belt for the UFC. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> oh, like boxing. Okay, 2022. Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, this looks like it's closer to it. Uh, maybe they haven't taken photos of it yet. They there's, have. No, there's they photos have. everywhere. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> what the hell's taking so long? <laughs> Hold on, guys. Being a streamer is real hard, okay? I gotta pull up all this shit. Where is it? You suck at this. <laughs> Just Learn how to stream, bro. How is this your job? <laughs> Learn how <Okay>. to stream. <laughs> Learn how to Learn how to stream. Yes, what? that's the one. That's this year's. Yeah. Huh? What am I looking at? It's a bracelet. It looks like See? like a cartoon. It just looks like a ring or something. Your mom yeah, looks like, like a it's ring, Jess. It's pretty <laughs> solid. It's like a solid fucking bracelet. Yeah, Holy shit. it's like solid gold. Wait, so they were back to twenty nineteen. Were they wearing crazy. multiple ones? Um, you can you can win multiple ones. Uh, but like, do people actually wear? No, them people don't wear them. But I would. I would <laughs> wear it in the fucking shower. I would fucking yeah. take that thing off. <laughs> is it real gold? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna bite that shit and find <laughs> out. <laughs> it looks like the Super Bowl equivalent, like Super Bowl ring equivalent. Yeah, like, like a also, high school graduation ring. <laughs> they do yeah. have rings too. The online tournaments oh. have, have rings. Those called ring circuit. Um, but online tournaments are so much harder because you can't make like live reads. And, yeah. And there's just uh, a lot more hmm. more people that, that can sense. play. Yeah, so um, that was really cool. And then it was Oh, like, where did you place for the second one? Oh, so I placed fourth for $116,000. Wow. And it was a $600 buy-in, so it was a really good ROI. <laughs> and yeah, then, uh, yeah. People yeah. were like, are you going to play the main now? And I really honestly wasn't prepared to play the main. I mean, it just seems really intimidating. It's a five-day tournament. It's you're kind best, of pushing your luck a little. Yeah, this is the best poker like. players in the world. But <laughs> for the experience, I thought it'd be really fun and like kind of worth it and people afterwards after i got that uh after i won fourth in that tournament people were like are you playing any more tournaments and can i buy a piece of you so a lot of things that like a lot of poker players they'll sell a piece of their action and it's very very mm -hmm. normal in the community to have people staking you so like if the buy like a, you're like a horse and yeah, they're yeah, on exactly. You. Okay. So they give you bet. part of your buy-in. That's buy so cool. Yeah. So okay. exactly. So if I have a ten thousand dollar buy-in and I sell fifty percent of myself, then um, with whatever I win, it gets distributed to whoever, however per much percentage that person bought. So if you bought one percent for a hundred bucks, then if I win a million dollars, you get one percent of a million dollars. Yeah, that's, that's not math. too bad. Yeah. So people do. <laughs> <laughs> so people that's do so that. Cool. Yeah. What was the number one prize? How much was that for the one I played? Yeah, three hundred thirty-five thousand, I think. Wow, that's oh. wild. Yeah, I was so close to. At one point, at the final or right before the final table, I was second in chips, and the third place was like way behind. But then I did a dumb move. It was dumb. I regret. Do so not cool. be yourself you for that yeah. shit. Yeah, you won a hundred thousand, yeah. girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I'm with so that. proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. That's so it, cool. And it's just it's just cool because I I love this community so much and. It feels like I belong now. Like it just feels like I I feel like a sense of belonging there, and not just like I'm a you know a fan and outsider like, like a wannabe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I've I've won enough tournaments now where I'm like okay, like I have a good ratio going on. Yeah, a lot of it is variance. I'm not going to underestimate the the how much variance take uh, plays a part in this, but there is a lot of like skills and timing and patience involved too. So. And I had to I had to grind a lot to like learn those things and I'm still learning a lot. Um I played yesterday for twelve hours and I busted the first bullet uh and bought a, a bullet is like the first buy-in. No one then, yeah, no one knows what that is. <laughs> and yeah, the, second, like what? <laughs> the second one I made it all the way to day two, but um I have a very short stack and like there's parts of me that I'm like, could I have played this differently and had a better stack size going into day two? And there's just a lot that I'm still going over with my coach. I'm still working with my coach. I'm not gonna play like higher crazy stakes now like a lot of people when they have like a big win they go play like stakes that are way above their level and they lose it all and i just am not how into do that. you eat 
and like use a restroom and like Yo, how do you do that, that part is so hard oh yeah <laughs> i got yeah, penalized cool. i got penalized for going huh? to the bathroom yeah what it, what? It makes so you're sense. supposed to not pee for 12 hours? What? No, no, no. They have breaks every two hours. But my bladder is on like an hour and a half schedule. Oh, and no. especially because I'm trying to stay hydrated. It's very dry in Nevada. And uh, I drink a lot of water in general. And you have to be hydrated in order to think properly. So I'm drinking a lot of water. And my bladder just like uh, an hour and a half tops. I'm like, I'm bouncing at my seat. And I'm like, I cannot hold this any longer. And so... This guy was, I was like very vocal about how much I had to pee and how I was gonna like sit out the next hand. And I was in the big blind, which is the one, the only position where you have to put money in the pot. So you're forced to be in the hand until somebody raises and then you can fold your hand. But, um, and it has to come to you first before you can fold. And so I am like fucking dying. Like my bladder, like I think I'm leaky. Like I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm no. gonna end up in a puddle of pee right here if I don't leave like right now. And this guy, someone raised and this guy was just thinking forever, like forever. And you can call the floor if someone's thinking too long, but I felt like calling the floor would take even longer. And I was just like trying to like be patient enough to get through the oh, hand. No. And he was taking so fucking long. I was like, I just gotta go. And I folded my cards and I and I left it. I ran to the fucking bathroom. And when I came back, they were like, uh, the floor was at the table and they're like, yeah, you, you're getting penalized because uh, you have to sit out two hands now because um, you were in the hand already, you saw your card. So it basically g- gave information to the people ahead of me that I wasn't gonna be in the hand, which could have been a threat and a reason for them not to play the hand. Mm-hmm. So it like, it influenced the action of the game. And I understand, but I'm like, holy shit, I was gonna literally fill this entire seat with urine. Oh no. <laughs> so the your penalty not was just it. to sit out. like not Yeah, actual. I had to sit out two hands, but it was like two hands I, in, in positions I didn't really want to sit out on, but oh. who knows? Those could have been the hands that I busted a tournament with and then I wouldn't have made it that far. So yeah. you never know, like every True. little mm-hmm. bit counts, like the, every little bit adds to the variance of either making it or not making it. And mm-hmm. that's see? what's you so See what crazy. happens? That is why you're like me and you never drink water and your bladder doesn't expect you to go <laughs> pee every hour. I don't. I sat the whole 12 hours, just fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> maybe you should play poker, Gina. Yeah, <laughs> oh, switch. That's the only yeah. good thing I have about it is that I don't have to pee. Because that's if all. I roll a dice, I know how many spaces to go. Yeah, that's so true. See, I, I got to count. We got some. We can do some strategy switching going on. <laughs> Gina, so what about like, you? Oh, um. So this is what comes out in July. Uh. I am still with G4. I have my attack of the show. I just finished season one of my D&D show. And as of, well, th- now that we're recording this, two days ago, we recorded the first episode of the uh, new show that I'm on. It's G4. We teamed up with WWE Wrestling. Whoa. And I am a co-host. Cool. Yeah. It's a new show called Arena, and I'm co-host now, which I'm really excited about. We just filmed the first episode today, Saturday, so we filmed it on Thursday in our new studio and everything so i'm really excited That's about that awesome. do you have to know yeah. about wrestling do you have to know a lot about it no oh, mm-hmm. okay sick no but i'm getting like deeper into like the wrestling world yeah and getting to know everyone which is really fun i used to watch wrestling when i was a kid i used to watch it when it was wwf yeah, yeah. that's how yeah. i know it as i hear wwe and i'm like that sounds so weird <laughs> yeah it's really strange but um it's a federation the federation yeah. <laughs> come out pandas wwf is now pandas yeah yeah i think that's um, why they changed it right because wwf mm-hmm. like sued them or something what does e stand for entertainment entertainment wait World wrestling Wide. i should wait, know what this does it stand for <laughs> i should probably know this let me see Entity? i should probably know this yeah thing. you should google it before World this happens <laughs> World Wrestling World- Entertainment. Yeah, I don't know. I think she's pretty open wrestling. about how she has to count dice yeah, it's numbers. Yeah, wrestling so. entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah. but it, she's still in character. I'm just there to talk, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're just there to be hot. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah, I'm just there to be hot and to talk about things. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we just f- finished filming that. Uh, the schedule's slowing down a little bit since I wrapped season one of my Dungeons and Dragons show. But um, it's been fun. It's been really busy. It's been crazy. I really do wish I could travel more. But I'm I'm learning so many new things and stepping into wrestling. Yeah. Was something that I never thought I would do when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. But I'm meeting so many cool wrestlers. And now my one of my bucket list items is like 
to like jump through a table or get hit by a ladder oh, or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, like I just want to see what it's like. They smash like a fake chair over <laughs> you. Beyond Are they actually real chairs? I talk to them. Gina, and, that's your kink. We know. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, you got heard you're still to get knocked out. <laughs> No, I talked to the wrestlers. I was like, I told them, I was like, you know what? I really want to get hit by a chair now. And they're like, dude, it actually hurts really bad. It hurts more than getting hit by a ladder. And you're and like, so like, describe it. Yeah, describe it. Describe it slowly. <laughs> I know. Um, like a like metal, metal ladder? Yeah, those metal ladders. Oh, they they said the chair you're like, can you hit me right here yeah, and yeah. Yeah. with it? <laughs> and just hold it on my yeah. throat. <laughs> I've, but I've learned so much. Like, chairs hurt more than ladders tables are easy like they're super easy and they don't like fake it they're actually real chairs they're not like pre no that's like, what i thought too perforated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what i thought too and i was like damn what do you guys do with these thousands of chairs that you guys destroy every <laughs> month and shit like you guys are putting like you guys are the people who are keeping the business in business the chair business in business and they're like so what do you i was like what do you guys do with the destroyed stuff they're like usually like we sign it we give it to the kids and stuff because I didn't realize this, but back then when I was watching WWF, it was very much like rated R, but now it's like super PG-13, PG for kids. So it's like a whole family event now. Oh. Um, Imagine remember, aliens like looking at us and like, we're just slamming chairs and tables. They're like, okay, ladders hurt less than chairs, yeah. but <laughs> tables are easy. Like we well, just <laughs> slam tables all day long. <laughs> like, it's so we're like, yeah, we're we're peacing out. We're not going to that planet. Right? These people are <laughs> wild. <laughs> um, it's super fun because, like I said, it's so PG-13 now that we went to a wrestling show with the host and stuff. And there's these kids sitting in front of us. Um, and we're so used to old wrestling. I was so used to old wrestling. And a few of us are like, yeah, it's fucking it. And the kids turn around like, and we're like, <laughs> respectfully. <just> <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. But yeah, it's, it's been really crazy. And, you know, the funny thing is two days ago, um, I was on my my Facebook. And you know how Facebook has like those Facebook memories? I posted 12 years ago. Um, Holy crap, I just got I got shown on G4 TV um, back when they were still like the old legacy G4 TV channel. And they were at E3 and I was a booth babe back then. I used to work all the conventions as a booth babe. And they just had me like wave the camera and say, hi, welcome to E3. Like just like the most simplest thing. And I found it on my memories and I tweeted it. And I guess there's like a an internet time machine or whatever that people can use. And they found the clip from when I was like 20 years old. Crazy. So cute. And I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Like it's come full circle. Yeah, yeah. you manifested that's so awesome. it. Right? You totally so, manifested it. It's really cool. And it's funny because like in that clip, they cut me off at the end. <laughs> yeah. For a graphic. <laughs> And it's so funny because now the ongoing joke, sometimes they do that to me on the show also. <laughs> when I'm introducing a new bit, they just cut me off the graphic. I'm like, you motherfuckers never changed, huh? <laughs> They're like, I we like that. you, but that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> like, so you can feel at home, you know, nostalgic. <laughs> we got it. You have boobs. We got the boobs. It's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How we got the it? shot. <laughs> that clip back then, I didn't have boobs yet. <laughs> oh, that's oh, crazy. Even it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. not even notice. Before um, the boobs, yeah. the the girl before the boobs, the girls before the girls, the girl before the boobs. Who was she? Behind the boobs. Yeah, <laughs> she's so mysterious. Boobs. Who is she? <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then wait, this is July episode. Then that means my birthday's coming up too. Oh yeah, thirty three. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna be at Comic Con. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dork. <laughs> Thirty-three, yeah. 33. Oh, yeah. You're, so you're doing it for work? Is it yeah. the San Diego one, the big one? Uh, the big one in San Diego, yeah. Oh, nice. I always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. it Same. Really so all these years, like as a booth babe, I only went as like, um, I guess like as as a booth babe. But then like I never got to be in the the hall. It was just like all these activations outside the main show. So this is my first time actually being in the hall, the main show, and we have like three panels that we're doing. Oh, so it's cool. like a huge change yeah. from like what I used to do to now, and but it's still like in the same realm. That makes now me you're happy. doing important stuff. I know yeah. I'm doing like weird important stuff now. <laughs> like if people actually want to come see me talk, which is like the dumbest thing because like why? <laughs> you know that's what like, I'm why? saying. I don't know. Right? Like <laughs> you guys are dumb. Like why did you put me on camera? I had oh to do a God. meeting, um, uh, the other day. It was like I don't know, like. Uh, 
my president pulled me and like three other hosts off the show because they were holding like a summit. I'm attending summits now. Why? Wow. Oh. That sounds the corporate fuck? as fuck. <laughs> it's so corporate. Um, How are you we, handling it? Huh? How are you handling it? Does it feel it's weird? Fine. Do you feel it's it's it was weird because like it was me and my three hosts and my president sitting on stage answering questions to like a hundred something people and they're all from like huge huge companies some fortune 500 companies because it's like it's a uh, it's talking about um uh like media traditional media and new media and stuff and advertisement all that stuff and like advertising with g4 and so it's like it was so corporate and I was sitting there and I remember I was sitting there right before everyone came in. I looked over at my host, um, Gerard. And I was like, Gerard, I don't want to do this. It's so, it's so formal. I just want to sit and talk about wieners. They said I can't cuss. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know, Gina, just stick it out for like 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, but I don't like it. <laughs> You're like, one, two, <laughs> two, how many minutes three, is that? I don't want <laughs> Huge shout out to our sponsor today, adamandeve.com. We have a great deal for you guys. If you don't know anything about adamandeve.com, well, let's just say that there are toys that are very pleasurable to play with. I just go to the website and check it out and see what you like on there. And then go ahead and enter the code MOOD for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the US plus Canada. Some exclusions might apply, but I want you to go check out how they have 24 hour customer service. 24 seven okay not just 24 hour but seven days a week don't don't forget that seven also they have 90 day no hassle returns okay you don't like that toy that you uh played with for a little bit go ahead and return it hassle free it says they got discreet packaging so what you live with your parents don't want them to know maybe they maybe they put that it's a laptop in there you know like studying materials <laughs> that's what you ordered off the site they've been in business for over 50 years and 20% of their profit goes to help the spread of HIV around the world. So go to adamandeve.com and use code MOOD to get 50% off one item plus free shipping. That's adamandeve.com, use code MOOD, M-O-O-D, to get 50% off one item plus free shipping. Wait, you know what I just realized? Mm -hmm. uh, you keep saying that this episode comes out in July, but no, it's actually uh, coming out on the 28th. That's just so FYI, which means... This episode comes out right before our panel. We're doing a panel in Austin oh, yeah. at RTX. So if you're watching this and you are in Austin or you plan on going to Austin, check us out at RTX. We have a panel on Sunday, July 3rd at 1130 a.m. And that's the next time we're all going to be together. So I'm really looking forward to that because that's going to be Luca's first time on an airplane. <gasps> we're going to be going oh. all together. And so. if you're in Austin and you play poker, I will be at the lodge playing some cash <laughs> games. Uh, my friends own a, own a card room. Well, they're they're like poker vloggers and they all own a card room cool. together called the lodge. And I've been meaning to check it out. They have great tournaments and cash games. And do you know where that is? I don't, but I heard that Austin's kind of small, so like you could Uber I think anywhere. I, I think I know where that is. Yeah? I think I drive drive by it. It's kind of by where I used to live before I switched apartments. Okay. Well, then yeah. you, can, you can come with me, Jess. Maybe you'll meet a, a hot <laughs> poker player guy. No, I've already, I got rid of the last gambler that I dated. It's too much for me, it's for my little gambling. heart. It's too much for my Watch little heart. rounders, please. No. Matt, I'm scared of losing that much money. All Are right. we going to all Tip. have our own hotel rooms that we're sharing? No, we each have our own. But I forgot to mention, uh, for those of you that care to join us at this event, you can click the link in the description. Yeah. Because you can purchase tickets at a discounted rate. It gives you early bird rates. So the reason why I'm the one that knows all this is because I'm the one organizing it. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I don't true, know shit. And I'm she just awesome. tells us where like, to go. Um, she's, yeah. the, she's our podcast Yeah, I mom. booked everyone's flights. <laughs> like, I, I, I've she's, been she in contact with, the, with Rooster Teeth. Yeah, I so. just want to meet our fans so I can pickpocket them. <laughs> and they hug me. <laughs> and then, and then we can go play cards. Give I'm me, poor, give me okay, some money. I know. I'm trying to I'm trying to fund Mickey's uh, yeah, gambling here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I get a small cut of it, you know. She's staking you're gonna, me. You're going to yeah. I'm staking her. There yeah. you go. You're going to buy your racehorse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tip is anything new going on with you? Oh, in, mo in mom land over there? In mom land, uh, in parent land? I mean, are your nipples just a different color? Oh my god, are your my nipples, nipples are still so sore actually. Yep. 
because Luca started doing this thing now where he's like he's eating and then he pulls away and I'm like ow oh he's like and he started teething yeah like he started teeth he doesn't have like teeth yet but like the process has begun and so he's like putting his mouth and his thumb like he's He's sucking his thumb now, and Isaac never sucked his thumb, so I think it's so freaking cute. Really? Yeah, Isaac never sucked his thumb. And Weird. Luca, I've never heard of that. Luca does, and so I'm like, that's freaking cute. I've never seen that. And then so he just always has, like, his everything, like, goes in his mouth now, and, yeah, he's always <laughs> chewing, and so he does that to my nipples, and so they hurt. When you said that, I pictured those puppies when they get a toy, and they're like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or they're going to say the puppies your, your that nipples are stretching. Yeah. Yeah. Like the puppies that like are sucking milk from their moms and they like pull away. That's oh. what Luca's doing to me right uh. now. Yeah. Do you remember so. Joe Dirt, the movie where like the dog got was on the porch when the porch was frozen and his balls got stuck to the porch yes. and like stretched <laughs> out? I picture Luca's just like stretching oh out. Yeah, stretching. it's literally like he's doing this to my nipple. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I actually looked at them too and I'm like, oh my God, they're purple. Like they're actually so like bruised. Like they're actually bruised. Ew. But yeah, so that's kind of happening. But this summer though is really exciting because we are doing a lot of traveling. We're actually so like the Austin trip is kicking off or actually Vegas technically kind of kicked off our travel for the summer but we're going to austin from austin we're driving up to dallas to go spend time with casey's family and then isaac is flying into dallas to meet us there because he wanted to skip austin and spend fourth of july with his dad Mm -hmm. and then um from dallas then we're gonna spend time there and then fly to orlando and we're gonna spend a weekend with my cousin who lives there and then a whole like five six days um we're gonna be staying at one of the Universal hotels, and then we're gonna go to like Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios at Disney World, and then we're gonna go to the two parks at Universal. And it's just just gonna be the four of us. So it's gonna be the first time. Like, I don't know. It's like we're really ambitious. We're doing yeah. a lot with That's the a baby lot to do with, <laughs> with a five month old. He'll be five months by then. Yeah, and and yeah, like the first time flying, and we're not like we're gonna be flying to you know multiple places. And then coming back home, staying here for a month. And then in August, we're going to, um, we're flying into Boston and spending time there. And then we're going to drive to Rhode Island because that's where Casey's brother and his fiance are getting married. So we're going for that trip for their wedding. And then spend time in Rhode Island. And then we're going to drive through um, like Albany and Aurora and then end up in Buffalo. And we're going to go see the Niagara Falls. And I'm like, oh, it's so freaking fun. It's like another oh. thing off my bucket list. But yeah, and then this we're all doing with the Chan clan, minus obviously the brother and the fiance because they're going to go off to their honeymoon. But yeah, I don't know. It's just really exciting. Wow. We That's have a lot. Some- mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm exhausted just hearing that. I know. Seriously, I'm, I'm so pumped. The I'm like, I need part. to go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. No, I'm so- I'm so pumped because, like, you know us, like, Casey and I, like, yeah. we love traveling. Yeah. And, like, we love, like, showing the world to Isaac. And now we get to do that with Luca. And, like, he doesn't see, know what's going on, though. I know, right? Uh, he, this is yeah, all he wasted. doesn't, but he is absorbing it all, though. And it definitely is, like, and then not just that, but we're all creating memories together, like, with him. So he's going to be a like, Patriots fan. And they're like, how do you pick that up? Like, he's <laughs> going to Boston for a day. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, I don't know, just getting to, explore the world and have adventures and now like with luca joining us and isaac will be with us and like, i don't know how just... are you going to keep yourself from losing your absolute shit when luca <laughs> is like going crazy while you're traveling it will happen but he's i mean he loses his shit here sometimes too so i'm like it's fine <laughs> you're like we, i guess we might as well be in boston or new york we if might as be. well go out and explore <laughs> yeah. the world yeah because yeah. like i don't know like i see i follow a few people on instagram that are like moms that travel a lot with their kids and or like with the baby or something they're like yeah like having a baby isn't going to stop me from like seeing the world and plus like it's enriching for the baby too to see different environments and i don't know i really i fully agree with that like i i don't want like having kids to be a hindrance on exploring and like continuing to travel and like and like yeah just ha- explore even more cultures like eventually we like we were talking to because casey's parents are super like travelers too like they're every month they're going to a different country like they're constantly traveling oh what a dream yeah like they're loving they're retired like they're like semi-retired right now so they're constantly traveling and 
like you know now we're talking about like oh we should like do a a cruise in europe or something and like just take the whole family and like have everyone just i don't know like we like they get it you know like they it's get like it in the blood we're, of like, your yeah, like I, I married into the perfect family because yeah. I just yeah. get it. <laughs> like that wanderlust and like just mm-hmm. wanting to explore and just see different places and see all the things and eat all the things and yeah, just everything. I love it. Oh, so. <laughs> so lucky I've been dying to travel, man. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck to your little nine to five or ah. G four. <laughs> I got the travel bug for like a couple years, and then I feel like. Yeah, I think I've seen enough cities. <laughs> I've seen enough beaches and cities. I like I like vacation. It's like fun to go to the beach, but I think I like I don't know, like it left me and I'm like wanting to I was like that for a little to. bit. Yeah. Cuz we did we did we did this ridiculously long trip in 2018, I think it was. Like we were gone for an entire month. Like Casey and I, we went to so many different countries. We did so I many things. I remember that. When you went to like Morocco like, and like all those places. Yeah, yeah, we went to Morocco, Croatia, like uh fucking I don't know, England. Iceland, like, everywhere. You went everywhere. Did, well, Iceland was twenty nineteen. Oh, but separate. yeah. Oh. Like we literally went everywhere that month. It was so much to the point where I was like, I'm tired. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go anywhere. And then the <laughs> pandemic hits. And then it's like two years, three years of doing nothing almost. Where I'm like, okay, now I'm back. Like yeah, after about here, five days, I start <laughs> missing my cats. And yeah, my, and my and my bed. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's that. really cool. I'm excited for you to go see places that you haven't seen yet, like Niagara Falls. Yeah. That's really cool. Thanks. I, I haven't even it's seen like- the Grand Canyon, like, and it's right. It's really close to me now, but like, I haven't even seen a lot of places in America. Yeah, yeah, same. I think I flew over it when I left uh, Vegas. Yeah, I flew over the Grand Canyon for some reason to get back to Texas because I oh. I was flying over it and I was like. Oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But also, we were yeah. probably like, you know, 30,000 feet, so it probably looks smaller yeah. than, did you guys, than it does, like, if you were in a helicopter. Did do you guys yeah. do the helicopter ride in Grand Canyon, or was that the city one, Tiff? Didn't you guys do a Wait, helicopter ride? Huh? Sorry. Didn't you do a helicopter ride here? Yes, yes. Yeah, did yeah, you we do did Grand a, Canyon, or did you yeah, do... Yeah, we did. We oh, did the Grand cool. Canyon. How was that? Yeah, that was that? the first time I saw the Grand Canyon. Oh. I've never seen it either, and then that was also the first time doing a helicopter ride, and then yeah. getting to see that. That was freaking cool. Like we, they actually like have us in the canyon. So That's like we were, so cool. like we were in the canyon. They also have, they have other tours where they land the helicopter in like a certain spot, and you can actually get out of the helicopter and like be in the Grand Canyon. But we didn't oh. do that one. Um, but it was still really sick, like just to see it. And I was really grateful that that was my first Grand Canyon experience, and not the like two three hour bus ride or whatever yeah. however long it takes to like go and then and you gotta ride a donkey or something all hot and <laughs> yeah. just lots of people and i don't know El like Bro. yeah Bro. Like, no the helicopter was really cool like i yeah. think i'm good like check yeah i don't have to see <laughs> the yeah. Grand Canyon yeah. I've been, like i was never really excited about like um landmarks because i remember when to paris the first time i went to paris i was like I, we drove past the eiffel tower i was like all right cool <laughs> you know? I'm so the opposite. Yeah. I cry. I literally oh. like. Oh. Well, yeah. The first time I saw the Eiffel Tower, I literally cried. Oh. Like I, it's just so. You know what happens to me? I, when I was little, and like living at in like my trailer park home, and like seeing on TV <laughs> like all this the like way you said world. Because I, I had, a, I was in a mobile home. It was like tiny, and me was, living in my trailer park. <laughs> in my trailer park. <laughs> Yeah, Girl, and same, like, but I don't cry. I don't know. Uh, no, I cry <laughs> looking at, I cry looking at the monuments because I think about that little girl who just wanted to see the world, mm. and like I connect with her immediately when I'm seeing these like monuments or like these places around the world that I thought I would never get to physically go and see for myself with my own eyeballs. Like I always saw it through like through tv or a movie or whatever and i'm like whoa like i wonder what it's like to be there and like to actually be there i connect with that little girl Hmm, that's really cool that's why i cry i think that was always in you then you know Mm -hmm. i really think that like there's something in all of us that's like it take it wants you to go that direction you know and there's like little signs of it from when you're on like gina's fucking 12 years ago story like there's always like these signs and hints of like what you really want to do where you really want to go and like that's really cool that you feel that way about fulfilling mm-hmm. like your child's 
your child wants and needs. I'm like yeah. Eugenia, like I, I've seen landmarks and I'm like, huh, because I always saw <laughs> a picture of it. And unless it's yeah. interactive, like I really love beaches because I fucking love the water. Like if I, like I used to dream about, like I still dream about flying to tropical beaches and like I'm actually like flying as a person and like I fly to a tropical beach and then I go in the water. And those those things are really cool, but um. Yeah, the landmark thing, same. I went to Buckingham Palace and I was like all stoked. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I wish it was more like how Tiff. Yeah. I wish it was more like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw Buckingham Palace and I didn't cry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's our one. <laughs> Certain ones have more strength to them, I guess. I wonder Probably, if you could feel yeah. the history too. Like if you went to Rome or Italy and you, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa or like if you went to like the, what's it called, yeah. the amphitheater in Rome? Like the, yeah, in uh, Coliseum. Roman Coliseum. 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 I wanna yeah. go to that. Yeah, I, I've, I've been to those too and I, get, I literally hold back tears wow. too. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Or like yeah. Egyptian yeah. tombs. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, yo, you would love this, Tiff. Did you hear about how Disney is doing this thing? Yes. I mean, <laughs> it sounds so I dope. <laughs> And like, honestly, it's really good value if you have that kind of money. Yes. I don't have that kind of money, but oh, the yeah. value is- Wait, elaborate for those okay, that don't know. So Disney is doing, this is not sponsored by the way, but <laughs> Disney is doing this thing where it's a 20, you buy this 24 hour, or 24 day trip. It's a, it's 24 days long. It's $115,000 A 24 like day long Disney trip. In a private jet. Private and they jet. take you to each- Private chef. And you get a private chef and a private jet doctor and they and a doctor on board too. <laughs> what? And they yeah. And they take you to each Disney park around the world. And mm -hmm. while you're there, you have the option of going and exploring different cities like Paris and seeing the Eiffel Tower or like seeing the the what, the, Even, Giza, the pyramids of Giza. Or, yeah, well, there's not a Disneyland there, but they're yeah. going to go out of their way to like take you to monuments like, like yeah, the pyramids of Giza, Taj Mahal, that's yeah. in India. Like there's no like Disneyland there. Like a lot of places there. that you wouldn't ever like maybe get to go to. It's part of the trip too. Yeah. And you're traveling the entire time on private jet with the private chef like for one hundred fifteen thousand dollars, it's like yeah that's a ton of money but like that value for a yeah. month long and seeing all of those places like i forget yeah. how many countries it is but you're traveling around the entire world and going to disneyland like even mm -hmm. like a fucking one day trip with a family to disneyland is like a thousand dollars could yeah. i do all of that and just not do the not disneyland, to disneyland part? <laughs> yeah same same you and me i don't really care for disneyland but, like, i want, the, me off I want the, the, jet, the chef <laughs> yeah the doctor Dude, can come along tiff and i yeah. on the rise you yes, guys could like drink in the fucking go. restaurant i, I i'm yeah. with her <laughs> Yeah. No, I just you know I need to win like five more poker tournaments and then <laughs> yeah, Nikki, all of us can go. Bye, bye Nikki. I'll go with you. <laughs> okay. Right? No, because like, I, actually, I just have Shanghai to check off. And then I, I'll see, I have seen all the Disney castles around the world. Wow. Because every Disneyland oh. has an, a second park or like in Orlando, they have like three other parks. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, we've, Casey and I and Isaac, we've been to Paris, Hong Kong, Orlando, here in LA. Ha uh, wait, I said Hong Kong. Um, yeah, we, we're missing Shanghai. So I'm like, fuck, I really want to go to Shanghai. And, like, check Such that out. Such a off. long flight. <laughs> I know. But yeah, just drop us off. Like, you two go inside. Me and Jess will just be at the door. We'll leave. We'll turn back around. We're going to explore the city instead. Just like smoking <laughs> on a corner outside of Disney yeah. in like, Paris. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to hang out with a bunch of children. Let me tell you yeah. that. <laughs> For $100,000. I'll experience I bet you the there's not going to be any kids either. Yeah. It's probably just all the Disney adults that have grown up <laughs> i don't understand it that's only a don't small part it. of the trip like you're in the disney lit parks for like you know, how many parks are there like five or something so then but you, then each one has multiple okay so maybe yeah. like a total of like eight to ten days out of the 24 day trip you're in the parks yeah but then like the rest of the time you're seeing other landmarks and cities and eating private chef meals and I would do one day at one yeah. Disneyland <laughs> yeah and then the, Jap even, the, the Japanese again. one good call yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take one. you mm-hmm Oh, the oh, Japan yeah. one. That seems cool. I heard that mm -hmm. one's tiny, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot. Japan is in the Oh, is it we small? I know you It's smaller. Know it. Yeah, it's smaller. But you know, also what I learned about the Japan one is that one's the only Disneyland in the world that's like privately owned. Like they're like mm -hmm. licensing oh, Disney. Really? So if you have like a Disney pass or whatever, like you can't use it. You can use it on all of them except in Tokyo. Mm. Something like that. Oh, wow. I wonder how they pulled that off. They I like know. to have control over their shit, I guess, huh? It's yeah. like how the Packers are the only publicly owned football team. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm an owner. 
Oh. Yeah, you are. Oh, I, knew that was coming. I have one share. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I want to have one share so I can say that I yeah, own a football own team. team. Yeah. It's like, oh, cool. you play It's my, not special when 100 million other people own a share. It is special. <laughs> Jess is hard to get okay. a share. I'll put it on my Instagram profile. Yeah, I have it framed somewhere. That's cute. Oh, yeah, I'm going to hang it up. You don't know cute. where it is. Yeah, I got to hang it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still hanging shit up around here. <laughs> so I'm excited to see all you guys in Austin, though. I know. I've I never been wait. to Austin. I That's a, somewhere I haven't been. I've never oh, been to really? Texas in general. Oh, what? Yeah. Crazy. I'm a, I'm a Texas virgin. Oh, oh nice. nice. Most people get you the biggest guns to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that's the worst a, person I have that day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not have the gun conversation. Yeah. That's very, that's a big it's thing a in Texas subject. right now. Yeah. Although, yeah. Gina, there's, there's like, this... there's like a, our governor is like the, his uh, competitor or whatever is like inching closer and closer to him because oh. like, yeah, there's a lot of people getting really upset about the gun issue here. So oh, okay, I listen, see. I don't shoot guns, um, but I, there was this purse in Vegas that's covered in sparkles and it's shaped like a gun and it's like a really <laughs> close fucking, it's really cool looking and yeah. purse. I told, purse. That's I told the get. lady at the like when I was there to register for the WSOP, I was like, if I win, I'm coming back for this purse. And she said, no, Did you go get it? I haven't gotten it. No. Uh, but how much was it? Like, it's five hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not bad. I know, but it's like, it doesn't fit anything in it. It's just... <laughs> it could hold, your phone is it rhinestones? It? Your phone does not fit. You could hold, like, oh. tampons in it. <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. Geez. That's $500? Okay, well, it's for $500, like, no. You could hold... Oh, my gosh. Okay, it's like the size of your phone and both the handle, but your phone doesn't actually... It's fit. It's, like, not the right yeah, shape. Nah. Yeah. Not for $500. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so no. You gotta at least put your utility. phone and some credit some cards and keys. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Jess, what are we gonna do in Austin? It's there. gonna be your city. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Are you well, apparently, you gonna Nikki's gonna leave us and go play poker the just whole time. Just so. when everyone goes to sleep. I'm gonna play all night. Like, you guys will be in bed. <laughs> you'll be drunk. You'll be in bed. I'll be like, okay. And I'll sneak out, <laughs> like, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Good mom thinking you, of party since when do you sleeping. stay up past 10 that's p.m that's true you always so fall asleep. Asleep. I don't know like this has been so weird since I moved to Vegas I literally played from 8 p.m. all the way to 5 in the morning and I drove home when the sun was rising and I was like I never wow. stay up till 7 those are my hours I yeah. know and then Me, Gina Gina and now I flipped <laughs> yeah that's, that's why I'm so tired because I played till 1.30 in the morning last night and I started at 11 a.m. and tournaments start way earlier than cash games. Like cash games, I usually start at like six or eight, like somewhere between six or eight, like around dinner time, and then I play till like three in the morning. Um, That's really unhealthy to be sleeping, uh, to be shifting the, your sleep. I'm telling you, it's gonna catch up to you. Why can't you play during the day? They don't have tournaments during the day. No tournaments. I'm playing during the day. It just goes oh. all day, like a, from eleven to one thirty at night. Wow. But cash games, I you play at night because that's when the money is. Like all the drunk ass people visiting Vegas that think they know how to play poker come at oh, night. Oh, so that's when that's when you can attack. That's, yes. <laughs> oh. Those are the best. The good games are at night. The locals <laughs> attack hour. But I only play like three days a week. Like not every yeah. day. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm working Damn. on my hands. I'm so shocked that this is Nikki now. Like, right? who would have thought? So, I, I would never would have guessed. I had never, right? like, even five years ago, if you were like, yeah, you're going to, like, get so into poker that you're going to deep run of the WSOP, I'd be like, what? No, me? Okay, that sounds cool, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing so good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so y'all, let's wrap up this episode. Um, it was nice catching up with you guys. Hope you guys liked this episode, catching up with our lives. Uh, and make sure you guys check wait, out all of our sponsors. Wait, wait. Gina, you, said a streamer thing. you don't like, you don't like, <laughs> I, Did I? you don't like eyelashes on a car, but you have them on your fucking bed. What? <laughs> yeah, because no one's gonna see this in public. Wait, what? I, they're seeing it right now, actually. It's What's very happening? public. There's she has eyelashes on, on her, her bed. bed. She said so people that have There's eyelashes like on their car should die. And I <laughs> You're just sleeping so because your eyes are closed, you know like mm. <laughs> And I did say a live thing. I said thanks for watching our live. I'm sorry. But thanks for watching this episode. We love you guys. See you next week. Okay, yeah. follow, follow, or actually, follow see us. you this weekend if you purchase tickets in the description. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Purchase tickets. That's right. Come see yeah. us. Meet us. Come see, see us. Tell, tell yeah. us how much you love us. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 Bye.